What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. You can see our two current satellite rockets are on their way. They're good, actually. They scan, or they at least start to scan tiles uh, all the way. So if you send them out into the abyss darkness of space, um, they will process as they were. I'm not sure if they're as quick at scanning as the rocket flies. But they're at least scanning some of the tiles that I hadn't uncovered. As far as I'm aware, all of the blank tiles without the question marks are blank. But I could be wrong. I think the question marks are the only things you need to uncover. But if I am wrong, let us know in the comments. So, working on the rocket. Still there, you can see a petroleum rocket. And this is the one that I was working on to remove the carbon dioxide but also the chlorine needs to be removed as well because that's a bit of a nuisance for them though um, as long as it's not down at the bottom where they sleep it shouldn't cause issues for them actually breathing while sleeping which is the reason that it's a problematic just over at the shine bug farm you know the reason for this it was to get the sun bug eggs to make the vials now if you look over at the side I forgot about it We've got 174 serum vials. 174. Now, the only chance of them being used is if somebody gets zombie spores. Uh, and if they get zombie spores, that would be amazing because there's none free or loose in the base. There's none free or loose outside of the base. The only place that zombie spores exists are in the biobot chamber where the biobots were built. Of course, I have turned that off. Uh, two reasons. One is to, well, more importantly, just because I do believe they were causing lag, and I'll be honest, they are very, very slow. Although they can work in environments that your duplicates shouldn't be, what I was noticing was all my important jobs I was setting as an emergency, the biobots took them and took forever to get there, and then forever to get back. They also didn't use the transit tube, so had to walk all the way, which was even longer. So, the, also, the biobot room has been turned off, shut down, and the doors are locked. So, effectively, there is no way of anybody getting into the zombie spores. Therefore, we have 174 vials, which is nice to see. It did work. The aim was to, to do that. And in the future, if I do a, a harder one or one where zombie spores are in the entire map or something... Uh, it'd be nice to know that we can keep everybody safe and secure. Remember, though, they can't get infected if they were in Atmos suits anyway. Uh, it was only when I turned the Atmos suits off that they were liable. So, in a nutshell, it's just frames per second that we can save by forcing them um, to kill all of the critters that we now have. Because every single critter in the game isn't providing us any assistance now. Even steel, we have more than we need. All of the resources, diamonds, coal, etc. is all done. So reducing that to reduce the lag to make sure it remains playable. For me, it's not too bad. Uh, obviously, it did get bad when I mentioned it previously with the sweepers running and a lot of critters. Removing those or the sweepers finishing has indeed made the game much better and better playable for me anyway. Of course, the encoding program makes it so the frames per second should be fine for you. Hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, we have it. So we do have cryo set up. We do have the process working. We don't quite have the engines yet, but I know we are very close, as you saw in the last episode. So, and to clarify that, we, ha we have them, but we don't have the, the fuel. We haven't got enough fuel yet, so that's the issue. Obviously, the research is going to carry on. I'm going to let it try and finish all of the research that we can do until we run out of data disks if we run out of data disks at that stage though i will stop it because i'm not going to be doing the whole um, into orbit collecting data disks for research that i don't care about or don't require and there we go the tanks are there obviously the liquid chlorine's there because it's a bit messy i could just chuck it but I'm not going to bother at the minute. So you've got the liquid hydrogen going into the fuel loader and the liquid oxygen going into the oxidizer loader. That there, the pink engine, is indeed the hydrogen engine. Very clean. I believe it's off gas as steam only. Uh, hydrogen, of course, is a very clean energy. The same as when you 
use it as a generator it doesn't off gas either so you can see the loaders are working there the first fuel tank is being filled up but the second will be as well so two full large full tanks and one oxidizer tank is enough to get your maximum gain and what is that two four six six rg rtgs that is overkill i just purposely did it for that reason uh, the idea here is that i'm going to try and build this rocket to go above and beyond or out right out where we need to get it to go just to uncover some land or areas um, you can see there's plenty of space left that we can build on top of this uh, in terms of size. This is a large rocket and the hydrogen rocket uh, is, is faster than the petroleum, large petroleum rocket. So with this rocket ready to go and to do some uncovering of that, there it is, the temporal tier. That is exactly what I have been looking for. That is the end game. Now, there are two caveat problems here. The rocket, the idea was this rocket was made to go here um, and obviously enter the temporal tier and we beat the game. There is a lot of other items you need to do before this is possible. Now, of course, we are going to have to do them to complete the game. For those of you that have done this before, you obviously know this. Uh, I didn't. So although I am going to send a rocket over to it to see what happens, uh, there will be the next stages coming up in this episode. And likely the next episode will be our last, I hope, depending on our efficiency in actually getting all of the caveats done. The caveats being that you firstly have to unlock the, the temporal... The temporal tier is closed, as you can see there. It needs to be opened. Now, the ice island, the ice planet, the ice asteroid, whatever you use as terminology, but the ice one, which is southeast of our planet. We've been there already and back. That has the temporal tier opener. That needs to be provided with a lot of rad bolts, and eventually you charge it up to the point where you can fire and open the tier. That's one caveat I didn't know I had to do. The next one is in order to use the opener, you need to have colonized five other asteroids. Now, colonized is very, very loose. There, where that black square is, the opener is hiding behind there. Now, I have been here, as you can see, I set it up, but I didn't think I needed to be here. I didn't know. So, that is something that we're going to have to work on. Um, the five colonized asteroids it just needs the printers so the printers that you can build and then print new duplicates you just need to have five of those on five different asteroids so i will have to send out some missions to achieve that as well obviously the second asteroid that we never thought we was going to go back to is easy because we can teleport there build one and come back the ice asteroid that we have to go to anyway to use the opener we can build one there so that's three and then we have got a landing spot on the lava island, the lava asteroid. And there's the Gasil and the northern water asteroid as well. So we've got landing sites, more than five landing sites. So we are good to go there, but we just need to actually do it. So with the research done I care about, I am now rewiring in the interplanetary launcher. This is so... I can send resources to where I need them. Of course, all of these locations I now need to get to. The ice asteroid that we need to basically set up quite a decent infrastructure to create a lot of rad bolts, which is going to require a lot of power. Now, you can steal the power from the ships, especially if you've got RTGs or solar panels on them. But the, each of the collectors uses 400 plus watts. And we're going to need probably five to ten of those to speed up this process. At this stage where we're at the end game, I'm wanting to end it like I planned. Um, I wasn't planning on waiting 20 cycles for Radbox to charge up. So I've learned from this planet where uh, the original planet asteroid at home here. Where the more of the collectors you have in the vacuum of space, the better. Just you need a lot of power. So that is what I'm going to do on that asteroid too. I'm going to send over a couple of people to make sure that the building is done. We need to obviously dig down, uncover the actual tear opener, um, and then open up some space for batteries. Hopefully somewhere where we can have some oxygen. Maybe beds, but I'm not sure if I'll bother. 
Uh, and then obviously we need to get a load of coal over there or any fuel that we can send over to actually get those power generators running. You can see the interplanetary launcher is firing away as soon as it gets enough rad bolts. It's got plenty of resources to send and more to come. That is what I'm setting up now. So we can jump over to the actual asteroids and start making some actual progress. So over at Chilina, the frozen asteroid, I am getting some things set up already that need to be done. We know we need ladders going down to here. We know we need to dig out around it. You can see as we're waiting for the rocket to come, the payloads are arriving from the interplanetary launcher. They are much faster at arriving the rocket. From what I've seen, the interplanetary launcher launching across the entire galaxy will only take probably half a cycle, maybe 0.6 of a cycle at the most, whereas it takes the rocket about four or five. So we are obviously waiting for the rocket to arrive, but I will set up jobs for them to do as soon as it does. It will arrive, it will land, and then immediately it will, or the, the duplicate, sorry, that will come out of it will jump up jump onto the tasks now I have jumped forward doing exactly the same process but I've had to jump forward because the rocket didn't fit no it didn't fit the I obviously put all of the landing platforms down I never really thought about it then I'm sending these fancy upgraded rockets that are ginormous it didn't fit so I had to send another one which is the one there on the left drop down and of course uh, build sorry de destroy the platform move it down then build a second platform up there on the left send that rocket back into orbit bring the big rocket down blah 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 i'm pretty sure everybody would have been bored of seeing that so instead i skipped it the outcome however is exactly the same so we've got the ladders going down you can see there that machine is the tier, temporal tier opener um, and that islet in the center of the circle is where the red bolts have to go. Now it's closed because it needs other things to happen first. Firstly, it needs to have line of sight, which glass does count, um, but the ladders are in the way and maybe the rocket base is in the way as well. Lastly, you also need to have the other asteroids set up. And by set up, I mean they have to have one of the printables uh, things on and it needs to be activated which requires a duplicate now i looked at this as a form of power and realized that is the largest sudden thing i've ever seen in my life so changed my mind um, instead we're going to go with rad bolts now as you can see there is no radiation here because it's blocked by the well the 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 ice that the, the asteroid what it's made up of so we will need to scrap that and move them to space as you can see i've realized it there so at the top of the ladder we can do that and they do fly over the ladder so what i'm hoping to do is get a load of them building up on the surface and then basically have them reflected down the ladder turn 90 degrees to the right and into that machine as long as nobody's on the ladders when that happens, nobody will get bonked on the head with some rad bolts. Batteries are on the surface and we are using power from the rockets. The set, the, that rocket there on the right, if you remember, I did put overkill on the RTGs. Well, that's working out for us nicely because it's given us a lot of free power or at least radioactive power. Um, the left-hand rocket was only to come over here and lower this down for the larger rocket. So that is scrap. So what I'm going to do is all of the oxygen that is currently stored within that rocket, I'm going to tell it to gas out. Pump it into the room here, as you can see. Um, there are some medic beds as well because a couple of the guys have been injured, mostly due to exhaust from the rocket's landing because they just seem to stand right in the way. The idea then is there's a lot of these um, crash satellites as well, which is a... What do you call it? Mini mini game, or you get a relic from it, like we've done with the the guy out of the little house he lived in, and a few other things with the fossils. I'm not doing it though on this case. All I'm interested in is getting the rad bolts into the tear opener and getting that fired. We need to send over some glass though, because I'm going to need some glass floors, and I'm wondering whether I could build some solar panels to help us out as well. 
So I can build a nice flat platform out. That is going to be for a couple of solar panels. You can see I've got a crap ton of Radbolt generators there. Just trying to establish now how much power we actually need. The batteries that I've got on the surface, although quick and it works, uh, are obviously going to die because they're going to overheat. In the vacuum of space, they have no way of getting rid of the heat, so they'll just overheat. Now, our rocket is pushing out a lot of power. There is also some power that we could get from the second rocket, but not enough to warrant putting the cable in for at the minute. Everybody's obviously having to hold their breath, all in the vacuum of space. But you can see there we can fit two. They are large, right? I think they only give about 400 watts each. So 800 watts in total, which is enough to run one and a half of the Radbot collectors. So the, the solar panels were a bit pointless if I'm honest but you live and learn now all of these capsules of course are full of various things whether it be coal glass uh, ores or refined metals and they're all coming in as we speak just saw one on there as well I really do need to sort out getting an automatic opener for these though and a beacon so that they land in the same place because having to click on them manually and keep opening them is getting a bit of and with that in place, you can see the two solar panels are working, albeit not really doing much. Resources still flying in and the coal generators down on the bottom are working too. We're a bit short on power. I'm running six, it looks like, maybe seven of the collectors. You can see the reflectors are in place for them to send them rad bolts down the ladder to that bottom and then into the machine. Of course, the machine is not accepting rad bolts yet because we haven't populated five asteroids. Above the power generators, you can see I've got a floor there, and that is, well, you can see that, I'm putting in more coal generators. All I'm going to do is just keep sending over a crap ton of coal to keep these running. That's what I want to do. It is a waste of coal, not really, because effectively we are forcing loads of energy into loads of Radbolt generators to generate Radbolts faster. Now, the machine holds a 1,000 rad bolts, but it, gen it drains the rad bolts and turns them into progression. I don't know, and if anybody does, please let us know, how many rad bolts it takes to 100% it. Uh, I didn't really pay much attention to it. Once I got it working, I just made sure the power stayed up. This is the second asteroid, and I'm ripping out all of the pipes that have oxygen in so that the oxygen is released into the capsule. The pump you can see there then will pump that cap pump that oxygen out and into the quote-unquote base. I mean, it's just a, a room with some hospital beds in. That's it. Uh, there is a power, power cable at the top there that needs doing as well. But once that's done, that'll start pumping and we'll have some oxygen. So at least they don't have to keep running into the capsules to breathe. They can actually use a room. And if I can get some beds in there if we're here for long enough, um, that might make them a little bit happier as well. The only problem is everywhere on this asteroid is freezing. Because, of course, it's the frozen asteroid. Speaking of frozen, of course, the the new version now, the frozen uh, DLC download content for this game has been released. I do have it, and likely that is what the next season will be about. So if you want to see that, please let me know. I did also have a custom one that I was going to make, a really hard uh, asteroid that's basically encrusted in... Neutronium, apart from a very small area that you'd have to find and dig out, um, just to make up my own sort of difficulty level. But it looks like because of the release of the new download content, I might have to postpone that and actually play the download downloadable content. I have, like I say, I have purchased it. So as soon as this season series is done, I can sort out the mods for playing the new Frozen one. Okay, so at this stage, this is where I realized, looking at the actual tier opener, that you need to have five colonies. And by five colonies, of course, I mean the printers that are activated. So on the second asteroid, this is easily done. We have the resources there already. We can teleport somebody over, build it, activate it, and then get them home. As a happy accident, on the water planet, we actually had a crash landing of two of the colonists due to a rocket running out of fuel. Uh, it was my fault but while they're here let's make it useful they can build one of these and get it activated again they have the resources to get that done and as dogs it may seem i'll get them to build their own graves as well because there's nothing i can do 
Uh, there's no way I could send a rescue mission out. They're holding the breath. When that runs out, it is unfortunately over for them. But that is another asteroid done. So that is four now. And then for number five, landing on the most terrifying asteroid of them all, the lava volcano one. This one does actually have the end game materials to make the thorium and stuff. But we never actually needed it because of the way we was doing the cooling loops. Nothing ever got anywhere near the temperatures that this metal would require. Obviously the raw material does 500 degrees increased heat uh, max temperature and then the thorium is up to 900 of it. But we don't need that. All we do need is for them to get out of this rocket and drop down in order to build the printable printer and activate it. And Desperation says that I couldn't think of a way of building a ladder, so I instead deleted the engine. There is plenty of metal here that we could build the engine again, and the fuel, of course, still is there and hasn't been affected. So this, this duplicate isn't going to die. Uh, they'll be fine here. They've got the capture to live in while they do what they need to do. And then these resources that we just need to make sure we open the right ones in order to make the printable and activate it. There's no way of making it look nice. I just chucked it in the closest place I could. And that is five activated. So we have five now, quote-unquote, colonies activated. Or at least, no, that now it's activated. With that, that should mean that the temporal tier machine is happy for us to continue. But, of course, it now needs to have, you guessed it, line of sight and i put the battery farm right above it so we can quickly fix that these guys are very stressed out uh, because i'm making them work extra extra hard but they aren't going to die they'll be fine um, they just need to pull the finger out so that we can get this job done you can see i've got two of the auto openers as well and a beacon to make it as neat as possible plus five six seven about 12 rad bolt collectors collecting all the rad bolts that then flies through down the ladders as previous or at least I've moved it over slightly and into the machine again all of them have been wasted at the minute it is working but it flies past the machine and into the wall and because the rocket platform itself is in the way I'm gonna have to launch the rocket move the platform over and then reland the rocket and just like that it did indeed work so you can see now instead of it having the closed iris it has that gold looking iris and it can hold up to a thousand rad bolts at any one time, but it needs to charge. So as far as I'm aware, all we need to wait for now is for it to actually charge. At 100%, the button to say fire will activate and we can click that and see what happens. All of this is new to me, remember that, so forgive me if I'm giving tips or ideas that there are better options, and if there are, remember to let everybody know as well. The beacon's still going, just in case we've got any resources coming in. I think I've set up coal to just be permanent. I don't want uh, the coal to run out. Okay, so forgive me, but see that we have progressed about 12 days, I think it took 12 cycles, and it has been fired. This is the aftermath, I didn't realize but it, a meteor storm comes and annihilates your planet, asteroid. But that does indeed mean now that has fired that the temporal tear is open. The rocket for all of the people that was on the planet has been sent home. I did that immediately because everything was getting destroyed. Um, we now have the ability to send a rocket to the temporal tear. With the resources, we finally made the extended Fera command module, which is called Endgame. And of course, that is exactly what it will be. But that will be the next and final episode. So thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. Again, thank you. Goodbye.